Hello, I'm Joe Hamaker. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about using SEER for space to estimate a constellation of satellites. Now, by my definition here today, a uh, constellation of satellites is uh, at least double digit numbers of satellites up to uh, possibly even several hundred. First, a little bit about me. I'm the uh, director of uh, BOD and NASA programs at Gallup Federal. I formerly directed cost at NASA, and I have over 40 years of experience with cost estimating, chiefly using parametrics. My uh, contact information is listed at the bottom of the screen here if you'd like to contact me. And anytime during this video, if you want to take a sc screenshot in, in Windows, you can press the Windows key plus Shift plus S and uh, use the uh, uh, cursor to paint in what you need to make a, make a copy of. Or on a Mac, use Shift Command and 3. As I said, I'll be talking about SEER for space today, which is the model uh, described on the right-hand side of this screen. But first, let me make the point that, that SEER space is one of a, one of a suite of models that Galarath offers. Uh, SEER SIM is for, uh, let's start from the left here. SEER SIM is a software estimating model. SEER H estimates hardware and electronics. Uh, SEER for IT estimates information technology infrastructure. SEER for manufacturing does detailed production estimates of hardware, including the ability to go from CAD to cost. SEER SIS is a model devoted to estimating the cost of systems engineering. And SEER Space estimates spacecraft and their and spacecraft payloads, uh, payloads being uh, instruments, sensors, and that sort of thing. The first step in estimating a constellation of satellites with SEER Space is to set the platform knowledge base uh, for our constellation mission. And you can see in the screenshot there that uh, there are another number of other possibilities, but uh, today we're going to use uh, constellation mission. And what that does is it sets some of the knowledge base parameters for you in a way that's appropriate for estimating a constellation of satellites. We'll be setting other knowledge bases uh, on a subsequent chart here. Uh, in this example, uh, I'm assuming that I'm estimating a constellation of Earth orbital military communication satellites, and so I've set the application for that. I'm also assuming that the satellites that I'm estimating have a lot of heritage from some previous design. So I'm setting the, the heritage uh, uh, level at modification uh, minor. Uh, I'm also assuming that these are Department of Defense satellites, which require full military standards. Uh, that drives the amount of testing the amount of documentation that's required, the number of reviews, and so forth. And finally, I'm setting the organization, organization knowledge base, assuming that we have a prime contractor who is operating under a, uh, a competing contract situation. Okay, the next step is to set the number of uh, production, quant production quantity. Now, notice in the top right-hand quadrant of this uh, screenshot, I have got production quantity set at one. Well, why have I done that when I'm talking about a constellation of satellites? Well, it's because I want the model to really give me a APUC, an average production unit cost. It's really a first unit cost. So if you look at the bottom left-hand quadrant of this screen, you'll see total APUC uh, at $160.5 million. And because I've got the quantity set at one, the model is really giving me that number as a theoretical first unit or T1 cost, first unit cost. And I'll explain why I'm doing that in a subsequent chart. So I set the production at one in order to make SEER space give us uh, an APUC that's really a first unit cost. If we were estimating just a few satellites, the learning curve in SEER space does just fine. However, for large constellations, and here I've defined that, uh, as I said earlier, to be uh, double digit numbers of, of, of satellites up to hundreds. Uh, we want to take into account both learning and rate effects. I'll explain that on the next chart. So learning, you're probably familiar with, learning is used to model cost behavior due to the total quantity produced. But there's another uh, tool called rate effects, and that takes into account the cost behavior due to amortizing fixed costs, things like plant and equipment, over a quantity of units produced annually. So if you're producing more units on an annual basis, you're, you, you have the advantage of amortizing uh, tooling and plan and equipment over more units. And so that brings the cost down in addition to learning. So here today I'm going to talk about an adjunct 
a Sears Space tool in the form of an Excel spreadsheet that we use, that we recommend you use for implementing both learning and rate effects. And uh, that spreadsheet can be downloaded at the uh, link at the bottom of this chart. And again, the instructions for doing that, uh, for taking a screenshot of that, is at the bottom of the chart. So if you don't get that, feel free to email me and I'll send you that link. Now let's take a look at that spreadsheet. Uh, first, at the top right hand corner, this spreadsheet is based on a paper that's uh, pretty old, about 30 years old. Uh, the spreadsheet is uh, based on a 1991 paper by O. Douglas Moses, but I can assure you the math hasn't changed in the 30 years, so the math is still the same. But if you want to Google uh, the title of that uh, paper there, it'll come right up and you can see the equations and, and read about the uh, technique yourself. Uh, so in this spreadsheet, which is depicted in the bottom right hand corner, uh, we need to make several inputs. First thing we need to do is make our first unit cost input in cell C17. And here I've just put that in as 100, 100 units of money here today for illustrative purposes. The next thing we do is input the number of any prior production units in cell C18. Now it's fairly unusual to have a situation where you've got a, uh, a restart of a learning curve after a prior production run, but if you do have that situation, you can model it with a spreadsheet by entering the number of prior production units in cell C18. The next thing is enter the, the annual quantities of units to be produced in each year, and that begins in cell 20, C20. And notice here I've assumed five units per year uh, over a period of six years, that's just a random assumption, for a total of 30 units. And so I've entered those uh, in the spreadsheet as you see there. The next thing we enter our learning curve and rate curve percentages in cells D20 through E20. And uh, I've entered 95% learning and 90% rate. Now it'd be, it'd be pretty unusual to change that uh, and have that over, over time. Uh, most of the time when you make a decision about learning curve percentages and rate percentages, they're pretty constant. And you can see here, I've just left it 95 and 90 uh, throughout the uh, six years. By the way, 90% learning and 95% uh, learning and 90% rate effect is uh, uh, in the sweet spot of what I normally assume when I'm doing estimates like this. Those percentages can really vary anywhere from 80 to 100%, but uh, in today's example, I'm using 95% learning and 90% rate effects. Uh, finally, we click on the Calculate Now uh, button in the middle of the screen, and that produces our results. And, it, and there's no, a number of tabs that you can see at the bottom of the spreadsheet. We're, we're only going to look at the first one here today, the Unit Learning Report, uh, uh, which uh, the rest of them are redundant to that, graphics and so forth. So the tabular, res tabular results uh, of the learning rate calculation is shown here in the unit, unit learning table. Uh, the, first the first unit cost, or unit one's cost, is $78.2987 there, units of money. Uh, remember, I entered 100 as our theoretical first unit. So unit number one, taking into account both learning and rate, is 78.2987. Uh, you see that in cell B8. The second unit is 74.3837, third unit 72.185, and then you see uh, the numbers continue to come down until we get to the 30th unit in this table in uh, cell C11, which is 60.8761 uh, uh, units of money. Now, the average unit cost over all, all 30 of these units is 65.2572, is shown in the top right hand corner of the unit learning unit cost table. And the total cost is in the top left-hand corner of the table for the 30 units is uh, <clears throat> just shy of uh, two, uh, 2,000 units, 2,000 units of money, 1957.7. Okay, so that's that's the gist of how to use SEER space to estimate a constellation of satellites. So in summary, you select a platform knowledge base uh, consistent with constellation mission. Uh, I recommend you set the production quantity you want and take into account, uh, use the spreadsheet to take into account both learning and rate effects. And uh, we found that the Sears Space model does pretty good with, uh, on estimating constellations. We've uh, estimated uh, quite a few constellations for various customers over the past few years, and the model seems to be working well. So I'll repeat the uh, first chart again with my contact information there at the bottom. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, I would like to know more about this. Don't hesitate to uh, con contact me. Thank you very much.